Good evening. My name is Mary Catherine Miller, and I have the privilege of serving Newark United Methodist Church, and I welcome you to this time of celebration of Christ's birth. This evening, we'll sing some songs, some familiar carols. We'll listen to the story of Christ's birth as it's been proclaimed by the angels. And we'll spend a little time in prayer, and when all is said and done, Whatever candle you might have with you this evening, I will make an offer of the light of Christ to you and yours in your home. As we begin our time together, we'll do so with prayer. I have with me this evening, Reverend Mehdi Messick and uh, Nikki Harlan. Uh, they will be, and I will be journeying through the service with you. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, into our hearts and into our homes. There is a place for you. Make yourself at home. On this night, we once again visit your cradle in Bethlehem to see with our own eyes the wondrous love of God graciously shared with us in you, Emmanuel, God with us, fill our hearts with joy and peace and our lips with endless songs of praise. Amen. And now we will journey to Bethlehem, the place of Christ's birth, our Savior's birth, and join together in singing O Little Town of Bethlehem, played by and sung by Brett Izza. The words are here for you. I encourage you to sing along at home.
And now we hear from the Gospel of Luke. Uh, the verse is Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And now let's sing of that savior, that child who was born away in a manger. A sign unto you. Medi, I'm going to stop the share so we can see you. So the scripture passage uh, is the same one that's used in the Charlie Brown Christmas, and it gets me every time. For years, I would watch with my family who consisted of my parents and my sister. We would watch and I would be riveted to Linus when he walked out on that stage and he shared this scripture and he says, this is what Christmas is really about, Charlie Brown. Now I watch it with my family, with my husband and daughters. Now our Linus is a simple kid. He carries around a blue blanket, his security blanket. And while many may want to discount him for doing this, he's pretty astute about the world around him because of that secure attachment that he has. He too realizes that Christmas has become too commercialized. Now this is a very interesting commentary on American society, considering this animated special is dated back to 1965. Whoa, if it was too commercialized then, what would he or we call now? But due to the pandemic, I'm 
pretty much the only individual to leave my house for work, for groceries, and some of the other errands that need to be done. So I have to tell you, I've been hearing Christmas music since October in some stores. It's easy to get overwhelmed and just burned out by the time now Christmas Eve rolls around. And of course, like the rest of you, I'm getting 15 to 20 emails a day that are simply flashy graphics promoting sales and discounts and bargains for things I care nothing about. Okay, that's not exactly new. It's all of this pandemic stuff, right? COVID just won't seem to go away, even in this night of all nights where we have to be apart. We cannot be with some of our loved ones and we have been missing them for so, so long. And at this Christmas Eve 2020, I still come back to the same Christmas scriptures, poems, music, and films. And while it is so different, admittedly, it isn't. And I hear Linus, let's call him a prophet for a moment. I hear the prophet Linus's words in my ears. And there were in the fields, shepherds keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were sore afraid. It always struck me that he said, Linus said, sore afraid. And yes, it's probably just a child's mispronunciation of the word so, yet to me, it reveals the degree to which they were afraid. And this year, I think after months and months of waiting and watching, amidst racial injustice, political fighting, misinformation, and feeling this illness of COVID come closer and closer and closer to our lives and to our families. Each of us are starting to think, this is gonna affect me if it hasn't already. I have to say, I think we all are sore afraid. I think we have been afraid for so long that we are sore, sore to the core. We are feeling the effects of feeling sore afraid for months and months of not knowing what will happen next. And yet life and all its myriad wonders continues on the midst, in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. A young man who once claimed that I saved his life by inviting him to go to his very first Alcoholics Anonymous meeting was able to celebrate the birth of his firstborn daughter with his wife back in March. He's alive, he claims to some extent because of me, but he's the one who's done the work for the past five years. He's in a much better place because of having lived a life of unity, sobriety, and recovery. And now he has a new born baby. Babies always bring us hope, like his child and tonight in the story of our Christ child. Children are born in good times and in bad. They come when they want to, we are told, and I know it's true. My own two daughters came into the, this world when they wanted to, and in their own unique ways. And true to the trope, Christ came when he was supposed to, in a troublesome, vulnerable way, as a babe wrapped in cloth in a borrowed manger. I like the scripture from Luke because the high and mighty angels were speaking to the lowest in our cast of characters. And honestly, this year, I feel kinship with the lowest in our cast of characters. I feel like I've been a shepherd watching my flock by day and by night, trying my best to keep them safe, and honestly, not getting much sleep through these long nights of the pandemic. The most important part that jumps out at me is that the angels would appear in all their glory around these very simple shepherds, frankly, freak the heck out of them, and then say, do not be afraid, do not fear. Well, we are afraid. We are sore afraid. We are tired and sore afraid. But they say this, look to the sign. For the wise men, the sign was a bright star, the brightest star, which with the science we know this year might be the illumination associated with the alignment of Saturn and Jupiter. God using God's own creation to create a sign unto them. For the shepherds, it was a baby 
lying in a manger, an unexpected sign for the savior to come, but a clearly different one. And one that perhaps the shepherds would really understand. They surely would know what a manger was and what it represented. These were people of the land, people who knew all the ins and outs of animals and their care and all the stuff that was associated with that work. It also meant low estate, simple, meager means. Hmm, maybe, just maybe, this baby will be one of us. And yet the heavenly host chose to tell them first. The people who probably already noticed, these were the people who probably already noticed a great shining light in the sky in a way that they had never witnessed before. But that was not their sign. It was the baby. As we journey into the darkness of this night, and as we hear the angels tell us to not be afraid, knowing that we are sore afraid, I ask you, what is the sign that God is giving unto you? What is the sign that reminds you that God is not dead and God does not sleep? What is the sign that reminds you of what Christmas is really about? What reminds you that God is with us? For me, it's light. It's this light. It's the light that overcomes the darkness. It's the light that we pass, even virtually, from one to another, so that the light can grow and grow and grow. Believing that the light can overcome the darkness that we've been living in for all of these months, but also it's so many other things. And unfortunately, it's these other things that I sometimes need a heavenly host to remind me of. So in these day of days, I have seen signs. Some of the signs I've seen, a lost and then found pink knitted prayer shawl, a tune to a song that I already knew, a squirrel with a broken tail, and a misspelled name. Signs to me, and yet very ordinary things that probably wouldn't mean anything to any of you. But in these little moments of realization, I knew God was reminding me, saying, hey, I'm still here. I'm here with you. So I'm not afraid to say that I need signs from God. I need reminders that God loves me and is very present in my life. So I think that whatever sign you need and you receive, when you have that moment where you realize it's God saying, I'm here with you, and it gives you hope and light in the midst of a very dark place, then that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maddie. Much appreciated word this evening. As we continue on this evening, we will be passing the light. I will offer you now and invite you to pull that candle near you if you haven't already lit it, or even to have it near you if you have. I offer you the light of Christ. May it chase away any darkness that seeks to overcome your heart. May it fill you to overflowing with peace, hope, love, and joy this day and always. I invite you to, to share it with, with all around that you meet this day. Maybe go and hold it near a window uh, so others might see it as well. And now we will sing Silent Night.
As we come to the end of our time together, receive now the blessing and the benediction and the sending forth. Let us pray. Holy God, we just thank you for this time that we could be together and that we could join each other even virtually. And we ask that you would continue to be with us uh, as we go from this time together to be with more family to be with friends in whatever ways are safest for us. And now may I say, may the God of signs and wonders bless you this Christmas night. Go in peace, carrying and sharing the light of Christ with everywhere and everywhere you go. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you all for attending. Good to see so many faces. So, so I have stopped the live stream, which means now if you would like to chat, you're more than welcome to for a few minutes. So you will know it's not going out on Facebook at this moment. <laughs> I, I have stopped that. Um, anyway. It's a quiet bunch tonight. So Merry Christmas. God bless. I'm going to end the service for all. Alrighty. Take care. <laughs>